uh, you don't know anything about what's happening without looking at T3 because T3 is the active thyroid hormone. We want to know did the stuff convert or did the stuff not convert. Um, Dr. Karazian says here, total T4 and T3 uptake must be considered together to measure the activity of free or unbound T4. This index is measured by multiplying TT4 levels by T3 uptake and determines how much active T4 is available. Pretty important stuff. So, again, if T3 uptake is high, um, if T4 is depressed, then T3 is usually high. Do you understand? So, if, if um, you know, in order to get the right percentages in the body, you need to look at everything. You can't just look at one thing. Because there could be a problem with the pituitary, there could be a problem with the hypothalamus, there could be a problem with the thyroid. Remember, there could be a problem with the liver, because about 60% of T4 is converted to T3 in the liver. There could be a problem with the digestive tract. There could be a problem with all of these things. Probably be a good idea to do, if you're going to do a lab, and again, interestingly enough, with my patients, I, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I do very few of these labs. Because I'm able to figure out what's causing the problem through the other types of therapies that I do. Um, well, I'm able to figure out what's causing the problem through the um, applied kinesiology methods that I use of diagnosing and the total body modification methods of, that I use of diagnosing and the sacral occipital technique methods that I use of diagnosing and all the many, many methods of diagnosing. Like, did you know that if a person has trouble with their thyroid, their ear tends to be slightly lower than their eye? Don't look at my ear and my eye, but did you know that? Did you know that if someone has trouble with their thyroid, I already went through it, but they tend to have a thin upper lip? Did you know they tend to have skin conditions and skin problems? Did you know that they tend to have hair loss? feel like crying all the time, get depressed. Did you know about this stuff? They tend to have a lot of mood disorders. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And you may be asking yourself, well, how is it that I came about becoming a thyroid expert and being able to help people who have trouble with their thyroid and women who have female hormonal imbalances by figuring out what's causing their hormonal imbalances? You might be asking yourself that. Well, I, I want to share that with you quickly right now. It turns out that my father's a medical doctor. He's a psychiatrist. He's now retired, but he was a psychiatrist for many years. And medical school education is required to become a psychiatrist. I didn't know it at, until recently, but when I was born, up until around the age of uh, maybe um, 8 or 10 years old, I actually had a thyroid condition, both in this book, Hypothyroidism by Dr. Mark Starr, and also Hypothyroidism, The Unsuspected Illness by Dr. Broda Barnes, the medical doctor, and also Lawrence um, Galtron. They talk about myxedema. Myxedema is when a person um, pinches their skin it should be um, thin enough to come up into the, the fingers, tips, the way mine is now. That's normal, actually. And if it doesn't, if you can't really get it up, if it just doesn't really pinch up, that's one way, one way only, of diagnosing what's called mixed edema. And what Dr. Broda Barnes found um, after studying people with thyroid conditions for Wow, I, I believe it was over 20 years he, he, he focused just on patients who had trouble with their thyroid. I mean, really, um, a so-so book, kind of a little bit technical, but you may want to pick it up. It's a, pretty, it's a pretty good book. I mean, if you're a healthcare provider, get it right away. Don't waste your time and screw around. Just get this book. But if, you know, if you're a layman and health, you're not involved in the healthcare profession, you know, maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. But what they found was that um, people who have trouble with their thyroid always have mixed edema. And people who have their trouble with their thyroid often have this moon-shaped face. They're a little bit overweight. And when they're born, they have this kind of like fatty arms. Sometimes you'll see like, uh, like fat wrinkles. They might have um, dry skin and flake and unhealthy nails that are sort of um, break easily or 
you know, our, our thin nails, thin hair. And I, f I looked at my baby pictures, and man, I was looking at the pictures in Dr. Mark Starr's book, and I was comparing them to my baby pictures um, between the time of birth and right around 8 or 10 years old. And sure enough, I had this, this mixed edema. I had a thyroid condition. Luckily, I grew out of it, and I never, I never have needed thyroid medication. Um, well, when I say I never needed, I never took any thyroid medication. I refused to use any. But I absolutely, for sure, did have a thyroid condition between the years, of, you know, between birth and about 8 or 10 years old. I mean, I looked, I didn't look, I wasn't a good-looking baby. I mean, I looked kind of like a monkey or something. I had the, the, the thick, kind of puffy um, eyelids and the puffy face. This is, this is due to a chemical called mucin, which is found in the skin of these types of patients. And the mucin is like a fatty substance that causes a puffiness of the skin. And interestingly, in, in patients who have hyperthyroidism, they don't have that, that mucin. They, they tend to be thinner, and they tend to have um, very fine features, but they do still have often the up, uh, fine upper lip. And they tend to be, um, they tend to have strange personality uh, disorders. Like um, they get um, upset very easily. They, they make rash decisions that don't make a lot of sense. They are often a bit impulsive and do things at the spur of a moment. They don't like being in crowded places. Anyway, there's a lot of interesting things when it comes to to the thyroid. So we have these three labs that we should do if we have a thyroid condition to find out what kind of thyroid condition we have. And another one that's good to do is called resin T3 uptake. Resin T3 uptake. And that'll allow us to find out how well um, T3 is being converted um, in, at the cellular level. So that's, that's really, that's, that's, that's important. And it's also a good, good idea to look at free T3. And I'm getting all of this from Dr. Karazian's book, by the way, right now. I'm going through Dr. Datis Karazian's book. Another thing we should look at, according to Dr. Datis Karazian, is reverse T3. Remember, reverse T3 is the amount of uh, the, the T3 that never converts to begin with. And 20% is supposed to be reverse T3. That's called RT3. The free T3 is called free T3. Okay, so you, you, you need to have a f complete lab done. I mean, if, if you're going to have somebody help you, uh, again, I don't seem to require it a lot for my patients, the way I practice, but most healthcare providers do and should. Um, so we have uh, resin T3 uptake, free T3, reverse T3. We also want to look at thyroid binding globulin. Thyroid binding globulin is the protein that binds the, the T3, um, T3 and carries it around through the blood. So without a proper source of protein, your thyroid just isn't going isn't, to, you're not going to have a properly functioning thyroid. See what I'm saying? A, thi a thyroid problem is never a thyroid problem because the only place where you can really digest and absorb protein properly is in the stomach. Well, you break it down and you, you, know, you break it down in the stomach. 80% of digestion happens in the stomach, but then you absorb it in the small intestine, so since 80% of, uh, of all digestion takes place in the stomach and protein metabolism and digestion takes place in the stomach, you'd better have a proper functioning stomach, otherwise you're not going to have an, an eat, an, an eat enough protein, otherwise you're not going to have the proper levels of thyroid binding globulin. So what else? Can you repeat the last minute? The battery ran out. So, we've, so we, uh, we need to take a look at these things. We need to look at resin T3 uptake, 
free T3 and reverse T3 and also thyroid binding globulin. Now, thyroid binding globulin is especially important because if you don't eat enough protein and have a properly functioning stomach, then you won't be able to make the thyroid binding globulin because thyroid binding globulin is essentially a protein that binds to the thyroid hormone and carries it through the blood. So it's very important to have proper stomach function and a proper diet with a good source of protein in order to have a healthy thyroid. And if you don't have a properly functioning stomach and proper protein levels in your diet, then you're in trouble when it comes to your thyroid. You see how a thyroid problem is never really a thyroid problem? It's always something else. There's something that causes a thyroid problem. It can be treated. People can get, get well when they have trouble with their thyroid. So I think we've gone through a few things here. There's a few other things. The, the hormone that converts the, the T4 into T3 is called thyroid peroxidase. So we need to look at thyroid peroxidase enzyme because if the thyroid peroxidase enzyme levels are too high, that's one of the demonstrate that's one thing that demonstrates an autoimmune thyroid condition. That's most typical in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but you may also see a little bit of an increase in thyroid peroxidase enzyme in Hashimoto's. I'm sorry, uh, you may also see it in Graves' disease. So it's most common in Hashimoto's thyroiditis to have an increased TPO, but you may also see it in Graves' disease. So we're, we're really want to focus on TPO. It's the antibody. And the other thing we need to look at is the thyroid thyroglobulin antibody. Okay. We need, we need to do this. We need to do the complete lab. It may not be cheap, but it's, it'll pay off. Um, if you could all see me and save a lot of money, of course, but, but you need to do this. The whole lab might not cost you too much. It just depends. It might be a couple hundred dollars, but you need to do the complete lab. The other thing you want to look at would be the TSH um, antibody. And we're going to call that TSH antibody. There, your, your doctor may be a different, um, may use a, a different um, uh, way of, way of, writing it. He might put TSI. That's still uh, thyroid stimulating immunoglobin antibody. So this will, okay, so now we've done the, the main thing that we need to do for our lab for the thyroid. And these are, this is a blood lab. I'm referring to 